So this is what it sounds like in the room without any treatment whatsoever. And this is what it sounds like with all the panels in the right place. In this episode of Film Builds, we speak to an audio expert and DIY sound treat our space to get the crispy, clean audio we deserve. So this is our gear room. It's a five by five block wall room and it does not sound good. At this point in time, I am not an audio professional. I know what I need to know to get okay sounding interviews, but it's not really my specialty. So to help out with the space, we decided to call in the big guns. What are sort of the like key elements for getting great sound? Well, the key elements is uh, the microphone choice, uh, the microphone position, and then how and where you record it. When you look at microphones, you have one thing on the spec sheet, which is called the polar pattern or polar response. That is basically a 360 degree diagram showing you where your microphone is sensitive and where it's not sensitive at all. So the best sound is going to come from a mic positioned close enough and with directionality, allowing us to pick up the direct speech with as little of the room noise and reflections as possible. But what if there is still a lot of reverb? A room size is a big proportion. So the bigger the room, the better, to be honest. <laughs> like you all know how a bathroom sounds and that's yeah. the worst place to record it. <laughs> and the more you have in that room, the better. So if okay. you have something like a locker or a bookshelf, that's the best. Bookshelves are uh, perfect to basically scatter reflections. Lucky for us, our room is full of plenty of shelves to scatter reflections. The problem is, it's still pretty small. If your room is not big enough, then actually the first step would be to make some kind of absorptive or um, scattering uh, stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day, Timo. So placing our mic correctly and opening the doors to make the room bigger has made quite a big difference. However, it's still not quite there. So it looks like we're gonna to need to modify our space to get better audio. Now, we're doing it in a particularly tricky room, but you could also use this on a smaller scale for a YouTube studio or a home office. Sound can be hard to show and talk about if you aren't a professional. Sometimes stuff just sounds bad. So to give us something objective, we're using a free tool called Room EQ Wizard. You can measure the reflections and reverb using a waterfall test and get a graphical representation of the reverb time across a range of frequencies. But first, what does a really bad room sound like? We headed to the Syrup Lab bathroom to see what Timo was talking about. So Timo's definitely right. It is awfully reverby in here and we will not be using this for voiceovers anytime soon. The room is tiny with few objects to break up the sound. So it bounces back and forth across the parallel walls. This is giving us a long reverb decay and is what we're trying to avoid in the gear room. But onto the actual space. Our graph looks something like this. It's looking bad, better than the bathroom, but not that yeah. much. We're at the 155 kilohertz range. It's 360 milliseconds. Whereas in those lower frequencies, it's taking half a second. Which is around 97 hertz. That is very much within the base area. And those are the, the hardest sounds to reduce. But, I mean, anything is an improvement on what we've got, so. Yeah, definitely. We're not doing this in a like accurate scientific way where we could use this for research or like being an audio professional. But is it useful for us to get sort of a visual representation of what we're doing to the yeah. space? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's just a good idea to see if we're heading in the right direction or not. So it looks like we have our work cut out for us. We'll be building some 4.5 by 0.6 meter panels that will fit into the ceiling cavities to reduce reflections from the roof and making some smaller portable sound panels that will absorb and hopefully scatter some of the sound. You can find our plans at syruplab.com forward slash education or click the link in the description. With everything drafted up, it was time to get into the building. So the plan for today is quite simple. We're basically just going to build some wood frames for all the insulation to go in. Our plan is really just to rip it down into some 195 high strips and then just screw it all together and we should be good. The ply box will hold as much acoustic rated rock wool as we can fit in. This acts as a giant absorber, reducing how much reverb can build up as sound bounces across the parallel surfaces. It won't work particularly well for very low frequencies, but by making them thick enough, we should be able to get rid of a bit of the ring in the room. We've got the boxes made, so there's a couple more steps before we add the installation. We're gonna add reinforcement in three ways. The first is by adding a plate to join the two boxes together, allowing them to run the length of the room. Most importantly, we're gonna throw these little triangles into the corners of the boxes. This is gonna hold it nice and square, as well as providing a little mounting point to fix it to the roof. With the boxes all together, we gave them a quick sand and it was time to call it a day. So it's day two and it's time to turn these boxes into sound panels. 
We're gonna put some acoustic appropriate fabric on the open faces, fill it with rock wool, and then just put a frame around the outside to tidy it all up. We picked up ours from an industrial fabrics importer that specializes in stuff like this, but you should be able to find it locally. A fabric needs to have two qualities. It needs to be open enough that the sound can pass through, and also it needs to hold all the fibers of the rock wall in. If material is too dense, you can get a lot of the sound just bouncing back off, so the selection here is important. You can find a full write-up about this in this article from bettersoundproofing.com. The fabric is strong, but it's not that strong, so we're adding another strip into the middle, sort of just to support some of the weight and hopefully prevent some of the sagging. We finished adding our fabric and trim with wood PVA and a brad nailer, so these were ready to mount to the roof. Now, we're done with our large ceiling panels, but obviously they are pretty dang large. They're unwieldy and we're not gonna be moving them anywhere or packing them up. So in addition to that, we're building some smaller, more portable folding panels. The idea is that we can use these smaller panels to break up the reflections on our left and right parallel walls. We've had some success with much larger panels that do the same thing, but they're a bit tricky to move around. Now, with their reduction in size and thickness, obviously there's gonna be a loss in how much sound they actually absorb. There's always gonna be that trade-off between size and portability and how good they are. But with the right placement, we should still be able to get an improvement in sound. So we're just building a plywood box, which is then gonna be stuffed with the same insulation as the larger panels, covered in sound fabric, and then have a perforated plywood back for protection. We added a hinge between the two boxes so that they can fold, and then attached latches and a baby blade, allowing them to be mounted on a light stand. With all the panels done, it was time to mount them and see if we had improved our audio at all. So above about 170 hertz, it looks like we got some good reduction from about 550 milliseconds down to around 150 milliseconds. It wasn't as effective from 100 hertz down, but this was to be expected. So overall, they're pretty effective and they look great too. So this is what it sounds like in the room without any sound treatment. And this is what it sounds like with all the panels in the right place. So was it all worth it? We're gonna leave that for you to decide. Honestly. When you listen to voice in this room now, there's definitely still a bit of reverb in the bass. And we can see that on the waterfall graph. But with limited budget and how fast we did this, there is still significant improvement. Is it perfect? No. Is it much better? Definitely. If we were at 20% before, we're at 80% now. And you're definitely in that range of diminishing returns where you're gonna spend a lot of time and money really making it perfect. And for us not being audio perfectionists, this is probably good enough. If you'd like to build some panels of your own, we'll put a PDF of our plans up on the blog and you can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.